just like make a rectangle will just be your base level. So like you make a surface there, and then in one of your views, just kind of like use that as like a reference point to be like, okay, well this is zero. I want to be like six feet above that, so it's like a six feet, six foot like high level essentially. Um, so that's kind of a helpful tool with setting up your renderings. Right, most power maybe floating a little bit, but it's also in perspective. And you can always save, save that as well. So if you do happen to move around, you can you can go back to it. Um, and you can set your camera view for like all of your views. So if you go into your top view and right or in, type in camera and show, um, in all your other views, that, that camera will be shown. So just like scrolling in and out of your top view, you can start to um, move around, as you can see in this view, and kind of zoom, zoom away, which isn't doing anything, and that's because it's an orthographic view, but you can kind of still um, move things around. But yeah, does anyone have questions about that? My guess is that they modeled those patterns, so they, they probably use some script or like literally just like modeled the pattern like block by block, which was in forever. But they probably use a script that did that dissolving pattern. Do you think they use like AutoCAD or Rhino to do that? Um, but yeah, they could use. They probably would have used Rhino or CAD, um, but Rhino probably would have been most like straightforward way of doing it. So I'm gonna go back to that project. So. Um, Case twin motion. Yeah, so like that pattern. Yeah, they yeah. must have used yeah, yeah. some type of like graphic script that gave them that. And then in twin motion, they assigned, they probably grouped like the darker colors of one object and assigned like a darker brick to that object. And then the lighter bricks got like their own also material. created the pattern in another program. Yeah, that's so, my guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a way you can do it in twin motion. I'm not sure. Yeah. So twin motion is like essentially just layered things. Yeah. You're not necessarily rendering in Twin Motion. Yeah, you, you would still render in Twin Motion, so it has a rendering engine. Okay. Um, what, what's nice about, I guess, the movie on Twin Motion is you could, it has that database of plants and like other random features, like a landform feature if you needed that. Um, so that's that's good. You could you could still do that through Lance Design, but like the thing with Lance Design is that those those blocks that you're bringing in are like super heavy and they're gonna like slow you down and the rendering takes a while. Um, so. I mean, it just depends on like what you're going for. Um, yeah. Um, so you want to model like all of your structures, like whatever modeling software you're using right now. Right. Or SketchUp. Or SketchUp, yeah. And that's something that is really obscure through these workshops because I'm just like, let me get a random object. But yeah, you want to make sure you're like modeling basically everything other than like your plants or like the people, obviously, that you'll throw in through to motion. Um, and you can assign materials to you in that twin motion, which is nice. And you can still assign materials in, in Rhino. I can show you how to do it really quickly. So if you have like an object, and remember this is grouped, so I'm gonna ungroup it. Um, so like this this panel, for example, I want it to be like another type of material. Um, that SketchUp model came in with with those materials. So if I go to the rendered view, you know this is like some type of metallic panel. Um, but I could just like quickly in the material panel um, come to like another color with that selected um, and apply it. Properties. So go to properties and I go to material. Um, it's that color 006. I can change that. To like whatever color 002 is, but you can start to create create these materials through this panel. So um, you could import materials through library. Um, so Rhino has its own set of materials. So there's like you know architectural exterior. There's like gravel materials you could use. Um, so you can kind of get like a glimpse of that. Um, so you could assign that to like pathways if you wanted to. Um, 
Yeah, so you can do that, or you can just create your own material. So it kind of gives you custom, or you can start with like their baseline, like a gem or whatever. Um, so if you wanted to make your custom material, you would just like select that, and then in the material panel, just go through changing its color. Um, so if you wanted like a red, a red material, you can do that. Um, and. Uh, you could always right click in your material panel, assign to objects as well. So if you have an object selected, you can go through here and just right click and assign to objects. Um, you could also, like, if, if you knew like you needed a certain type of object, like if you had like a surface versus a mesh and you want to select your surfaces and change it to one object, you just do those select options we learned in previous workshops. Um, so from there, you can you know, do a rendering really quick to see, like, what that would look like. Um, so we're into that draft rendering. And just select render and run will like go through that. So right now, if you keep it on draft, it's it's gonna work up pretty quickly. Um, but when you start doing like more um, like poster size renderings, it's gonna take like a lot of time to get there. Um, but it's pretty flexible. It's pretty similar to SketchUp, I think, in terms of interface materials and stuff. Yeah, so I was gonna like leave the like last 20 minutes, like any general questions, since like the last workshop, the term. Um, I can answer anything. It's, um, how is Rhino for like modeling terrain? Like if you say, like if you have contour lines, mm -hmm. like, have, you, have you worked with that to like create a model of like yeah. actual? I would course? say it is, I'd say it is the like certified OS program that we can use because this program wasn't made for like naval and um, naval engineers and like I think like JPL uses it, but like they're like modeling really complex surfaces for like hydrodynamics. So the surface modeling is like super super capable of doing like terrain essentially. And um, if you don't already have the contour lines, can you uh, within this program, like, does it have that like terrain info? Um, you get sketch up and yeah. it's like, probably not extremely accurate. But right. So there, like, there's lots of plugins for that. So there's a plugin called Rhino Terrain, which I think is money now, unfortunately. But Lance Design has a terrain modeling tab where you can um, import Earth elevation data. So you can go to a site kind of similar to SketchUp um, on Google Maps and. Um, Let's say we just wanted like Paramount, whatever. Just say import. It'll give you pretty, pretty rough mesh. Um, I'm gonna get out of the view so you can see it. Um, so this is like pretty rough mesh, and I think you can specify it to be like a little bit more specific. Um, so like your resolution could be like. Yeah, so you can you can put up your resolution so that it gets like tighter and more accurate. Um, one thing that we did in the first workshop was we imported um, point data from NOAA. So you can go to this website. Um, um, right the NOAA data access here. So you can get elevation data from from NOAA, um, and it's typically along the coast because that's what they're dealing with, but. A lot of work in has already been um, analyzed, which is nice. So this is all open access, and my mouse is freaking out right now. Um, so you can come in here and like draw an area, um, and it'll like show you what data sets are available. So let's give it a sec. So you want to check out, and in your checkout box, you want to just make sure that um, you know you're using point data, and for Rhino purposes, you want to make sure it's like ASCII, or ASCII. So that's going to like let you import text files and create like an actual point cloud. Um, so that's like super accurate, um, and you can do that. Um, yeah. Can you bring in terrain models? Um, how do you know where things are? 
like on that. There was a road somewhere, but I don't know where the road is. Yeah. So I think SketchUp, so Lens Design used to import an image and like project it onto the surface. Mm -hmm. SketchUp is like definitely better with that because it's like Google. Okay. So it comes in with it. So you could go through the SketchUp process and always import it into Rhino with that image. And the image would come in Rhino? Yeah. What sure. if you then do a drape though and you want it to be a narrow surface? Mm -hmm. Then, I mean, is the image still Rhino? Um, you can like reapply the image like onto that surface like by the image mapping. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, and I could like show you what that looks like on a specific level. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess to go back to the whole contour question, uh, yeah, like you can use this mesh and run the contour command and like specify the height of these contours. So that's like a five foot contour. So it's it's pretty fast at generating that. And you can always like take those contours and like run a mesh patch, um, and it'll like let you you know it'll give you that mesh back, especially if you're like editing certain contours. Like if you're like oh we're just gonna wholesale like flatten this area out or whatever and like move some things around or I don't know I'm assuming some crazy stuff, but you can select those curves um, and then run the mesh patch again. It'll give you like a different. I mean, it would be really weird since I just like moved it around. So sell on curve, to select, patch patch. And yeah, so that will like actually show that like, this is like now flat, more flat, or like more gentle of a slope because we got rid of those other lines or whatever. So it's pretty fast with that. To create, to create like a grading plan. Grading plan. You're proposing new mm -hmm. contours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can. It's definitely not like, I guess, I mean, Reddit is like definitely not your terrain, but like, it's not maybe, there's maybe not as much like feedback as you would like. Like, if you're like working with these contours, like, you can always like move these points around, like, oh, I want this to be like that. And then once you mesh patch it, it'll like actually update with that geometry. So, I mean, that's pretty good. Um, but if you just have like spot elevations, um, I'm gonna make like, spot elevations out of this curve network. So um, I'm gonna use the extract command, so extract point. Um, so these are theoretically like what you know we bring in with lidar. Um, why this is being so crazy? So if you were to just have like spot elevations like that, you can still run that mesh patch command. So that's what's nice about that command is it runs through points and curves. And it'll like still give you, you know, a mesh that's usable. And do those points have, like if you click on each one, and will it tell you the height that's at? Um, that's a really good question actually, I'm not sure. Um, I, you can always adjust these points, but I'm not sure if it gives you like, it may give you somewhere the rhino elevation. There's probably some of that for sure. Because um, that would be really helpful if you're like running through. Just creating exercises yeah. trying to see if they yeah. have Yeah. But yeah, I think this is probably the best for train off like. Does anyone have like frontier questions or no? So you have like all your contours. We have all my rings. And it's all like extruded, at, like it's at an elevation. It's like all at the elevation. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to select those curves and then just type the mesh patch. And that will give you a mesh network of, of those curves. So um, I can do that again really quickly. So you select it and then type in mesh patch. Okay. And that should be like the surface of it. Um, 
Um, and then from there, you can always like do things like you can take that mesh um, and you can you know put the points on. So kind of back to what you're asking, like, you can like kind of get get some of those points and start to play with it like that. So that may be a little more helpful in terms of adjusting adjusting your points in terms of grading. Um, you can also like do a drape. So if you want to get like maybe a little bit more abstract with your landform, you can create a mirror surface on top of that mesh. So it's always going to like drape to the construction plane, so that's why it's going to look like, kind of like a blanket. But from there, you can use, again, points on to start to like edit you know, these things. So this is like a really complicated way of like doing landform, but you can always like play around. You're just testing really quick ideas on like small surfaces. Like you can always play around with that and see like what it looks like. Um, yeah. Videos help and like that went to asking people um, is a good way to to get like learning, I guess. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 